my name's Claire Cook and I am the Business Viability Advisor at International Media Support uh, based in Denmark. Uh, I'm also a senior lecturer at the University of Central Lancashire where I co-founded the Media Innovation Studio. Um, I was asked to tackle um, a, a really interesting topic which is the relevance and the applicability of action research um, as a viability strategy for uh, the media development sector. Um, this is part of the GFMD Impact Summit on sustainability and viability, which will be in Tallinn in Estonia in 2022. Um, what I'd really like to do is really explore how can donors and practitioners use action research to connect the worlds of academia and scholarity with what's happening um, in practice, um, especially around the questions of journalism, business and revenue models um, as a method and an ideology for uh, innovating practice. Um, and this discussion is particularly, uh, I think, poignant uh, in the under-researched sector of fragile media. Um, to begin with, what uh, is action research and why international media support are interested in it? Um, ac action research as an umbrella term, really, for a whole host of activities uh, which are intended to foster change um, at a media organisation level or at a group level, at the organisation, at the regional level or even at societal um, level. The idea is that it allows for a much broader and more integrative research focus than taking uh, quite a fixed mixed methods um, or qualitative or quantitative in isolation. Um, which I think is really important right now because we need to put the emphasis on solutions uh, and really try to get us all out of the echo chamber of talking about the same strategies uh, or worse, just trying to shoehorn Western strategies into um, other contexts. But action research in particular is well suited if we are working for future orientated uh, problems solving, trying to find solutions. We're interested in applied work, um, working with a whole different uh, granularities of civil society organisations, universities, um, researchers and media development actors. And it's a good strategy for scaling innovations and being able to share best practice and work out, in fact, what is working. Um, action research very much exists at the intersection of practice and the act of getting uh, journalism done, uh, dare I say, life itself. So th these notions of practice and day-to-day -day life are the agents of change in action research and um, so it's very much based on a cycle of learning this could be having a vision a strategy planning and evaluating that or it could be about framing a problem advocating for a particular solution and um, having illustrations and inquiries um, but there are different sub themes and tracks so participatory action research or PAR as it's uh, known in short form um, is very much puts the emphasis on um, setting change within the society, within the context, um, with those actors being equally uh, involved in uh, setting the research questions. Action learning is known more in the management and organisational fields, particularly around leadership or change management. Uh, I would direct to John Oliver and others who have done a lot of uh, really compelling research around um, action learning. You may be familiar with design thinking. Um, this is really borrowing from the commercial and the product uh, thinking strands where we look at integrating audiences um, in the process of empathising with them and developing products that match their user needs. Or we have action inquiry, which is a range of different types of action research um, and methodologies around appreciation, collaboration, uh, de development action or uh, some some types of theories of change.
At IMS, we are very interested in action research because it's really helping us um, find solutions in a grassroots way from the bottom up, which speaks very clearly to our localization agenda. It's a participatory process and the emphasis very much on mutual sense making. So we work very closely with our partners to have this inductive journey based approach. Um, and it is very compelling way of finding practical um, advice. Um, in terms of agile development, action research can be very helpful. It allows us to take as media development actors some of the heavy lifting away from testing and trying things out. Um, it sits very much with a pragmatist philosophy uh, around trying to find real world uh, practical challenges and solutions to those. Um, it's also a good way of network building. So for IMS, we're very interested in ecosystems and uh, working with media partners in their context and strengthening the ecosystem at large. Well, action research fits uh, very well with that. Uh, but more than anything, um, the starting point can quite often be um, a small project, piece of research, a mapping study, and then there's a cycle of learning by doing uh, or early actions or even spark projects um, as I've started to um, work here. And these are really good at offering the opportunity to accomplish something visible, uh, but that is also locally valued uh, by the media partner. So it's a very holistic and it's a very hands on approach. Uh, and it is, of course, quite labour intensive. What I'd like to do is just run through some examples of projects that I've either worked on at IMS or uh, previously. Um, but to put this into um, applied terms, for example, we did a, a report on artificial intelligence. We saw a gap um, in terms of establishing what was going on in fragile or emerging markets. We used the reconnaissance, uh, dare I say, from that investigation to then create an AI impact fund. Uh, and what that's allowed us to do is work with partners on very specific project around fact checking using uh, technology from one partner in Chicago um, and transferring that to La Silvatia in Latin America. And from this particular pilot, we'll then be able to have uh, more extended discussions, for example, with London School of Economics uh, to see how we can work with their AI programme with our partners. Um, we have done a trial, for example, with Smart Octo, who are um, an analytics service provider. And you'll see there the quote from Media Impact Funders, but the recommendation there has always been, in fact, for media development actors to take some of this responsibility around trying to test and try out these services. Um, what triggered this off was that quite a few different partners in different settings were really scratching their heads around whether it was worth trying, um, which tools, there's so many uh, providers on the market, which ones they should try. So the purpose here was to make an informed decision around what could work and answer some of our known unknowns. Um, so we ran a six month um, trial using the behavior metrics which are much more complex than google's simple kind of time spent on page or browser events and it really let us uh, have a chance to work with partners to understand what life was like for them in terms of using analytics for their decision making and their viability strategies um smart octo for example did, uh, exported um, missed opportunity reports, uh, most and least read articles, so that the data was really actionable. Our findings from this particular action research trial are not least around the current workflow for a lot of partners um, about how they use analytics in their um, newsroom. The importance of capacity building in terms of staff. What we have found is that only really the digital front runners are able to uh, make the most of this expensive um, intervention if they have a dedicated uh, member of staff looking at this kind of, uh, of, of digital content and analytics. Um, we still have many unanswered questions around exactly the granularity of data that they can't access and particularly around the complexities of other languages.
Um, another example might be to take, uh, for example, a technology tool that is working really well in one context, such as the Sudan, where a TV station had a lot of people in exile and they really wanted to know how to um, live broadcast but still really replicate um, the voices on the ground and we've now been working with another program manager um, to see how we can use this technology and work with partners in a different way to go through that full cycle of evaluating it and then transferring those learnings we're just at the beginning of a part a project called Talk, Talk NGO, um, but this is uh, an action research project where we are using advertising spend in Facebook around three videos, and we're going to try and see if we can nudge content um, and work out uh, better ways um, to get people out of their normal echo chambers and perhaps see media development content in a different way. And then we've also trialled a number of workshop style methodologies under the umbrella of action research. Um, so I work with one partner in Belarus who are a very small team with an established business model. But in their team, they were struggling to uh, work out which other diversification strategy to um, adopt. And they had three ideas, but in the team, they were struggling to decide which one to go with. Uh, so what we did was designed um, a 100 day method where we could do a, a minimum viable test of the three different um, lines of inquiry in terms of different revenue streams. Uh, and the 100 day was a really nice size because it was long enough to actually get proper feedback and do a little bit of a trial, but it was short enough that no real commitment was made um, and that we could make um, a decision on which one to try. A separate workshop that was uh, done in collaboration with IREX um, was on reader revenues and the possibility of this uh, in the Belarusian context uh, before the conflict and before the political unrest. Uh, but we designed this canvas that I also use with the European Journalism Centre um, around reader revenues and it allowed um, us to do heat test methodology um, where we could use cards to really prompt lots of questions, lots of in, um, debate uh, amongst practitioners, and then use uh, the canvas to have clear takeaways um, back to the newsroom in order to evaluate whether or not it could work for them. And finally, the last couple of projects, but 2014 now, so very much ahead of its time. But we did a workshop uh, with a whole range of um, media organisations from Belarus, Turkmenistan, Sri Lanka, Jordan, to main, name but a few, as well as with uh, collaboration with Internews and uh, Rory Peck Trust um, and Open Society Foundation. And what we wanted to do was to really drop uh, this new concept of collaborative revenue capture and whether there were ways um, to do emerge new revenue models uh, by getting exiled or um, very fragile media to work in collaboration with one another. And we used it all sorts of different methods for that brainstorming, word clouds, interactive um, um, iPad technology. We used uh, magazines and uh, short pictures and all together um, it was about really coming up with these solution or focused and solution orientated options uh, as a way to move forward. There are also examples of very big projects I haven't been involved with, but Inject, for example, Tamara Wischke and others, colleagues, uh, a European Union funded uh, initiative that really looked at action research as a way to uh, develop and creatively support new tools for journalists. So in summary, um, I do think action research has a really important role to play in terms of bridging theory and practice. Um, in terms of the media development world, it's an excellent way uh, we're finding of taking the heavy lifting off partners, finding cross-cutting thematics where there's a challenge that's faced by more than one media organisation. It's definitely a model that could scale. And with so many um, uh, researchers now starting to get very interested in uh, these applied methodologies, not least because uh, it's very helpful for their impact rating um, and contribution to, to that. There's a lot of unanswered questions that we have around action research.
Uh, a final uh, reflection for me is when I read the feasibility study for the International Fund for Public Interest Media and particularly around Pillar 4, uh, the What Works unit that calls for this collaborative media development lab, uh, an entity that's got a focus on agile learning, that's capturing and sharing learning and, and trying to find systematic ways of understanding that. I do think action research um, and IMS would hopefully have uh, a lot to offer uh, by way of what we've experienced so far. If anybody's got any questions about action research or how to use it, uh, I'm more than happy to address those questions and thank you very much indeed.